G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now, I'm here in my hobby room, not like last time where I was hiding somewhere else. And um, look, surprise kit. Now, it's Airfix, right? It's Airfix. <laughs> you can see the red thing on there. And normally I do, you know, finding rare Airfix kits. Yeah, that's Basque's acronym. Yep, 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 yep. And that's the thing. They're, um, they're either the vintage classic, like the Heracles that came out, that's re-released, but it's an old kit. It's an old kit's classic. Or I'm looking at some old sailing ship or even that motorbike I did, right? That Norton 750. It's an old kit, way back from the 60s and 70s. Those Airfix kits, I love. I love them. And I have reviewed and, and done some build videos on some more modern Airfix kits, only like the recent decade or so. Some of the new kits. Loved everything. Always loved Airfix. Then this came along. Oh, hang on. Then this came along. Now, I have been hanging out for a 148 scale, right? Bristol Bulldog for years. The only were some crappy old ones from Pyro and somebody else that were made in the 1950s. Nobody that I knew of made a 148 scale. One of these fellas, right? No Bulldogs. No. I do not bullshit you. There were no Bulldogs. No. So when Airfix announced that they were doing one, and not only that, they had a version of livery that was RAAF, right? So Australian, Australian. I was over the moon. I was excited. Oh, yes. I had a TP in my pants about that. So um, is it a good kit? Well, it looks good in the box, as you'll see. It does look really nice. The plastic is amazing. Uh, it's sort of not really an Airfix kit. Yeah, you'll see as we go into the video. This is so un-Airfix, Airfix. And there's good, and there's some bad about that. <laughs> All right, does that sound interesting? Okay, let's get on with it. Roll the music. It's a pretty good size box for Airfix. I mean, it is their standard sort of large size box that you see some rather big kits in. But this is only a little bulldog. I mean, she's only going to be little. Well... I don't know, I don't remember the 172nd scale one, which was, you know, basically not much longer than a bee's dick. But um, I digress. Absolutely gorgeous box art. I mean, look at her. She looks just wonderful. And what always attracted me to this aircraft is this fantastic radial engine and, you know, the uh, the more modern sort of stiff struts and just the, well, they'd be all silver, which made them look faster anyway, you know, those, those interwar period... Um, aircraft that were still biplanes but had a lot of metal in them and it's just like the Fury which I did in this big the back of it will be dull aluminium and the front will be very very shiny metal because they'll be actually full metal panels and this will actually be doped aluminium doped um, canvas panel lines will be pronounced because there's metal panels going to canvas canvas will be subtle because it'll just be you know slightly scalloped you don't want anything overdone you don't want anything underdone Airfix has done a pretty good job with this in the past. At least, they slightly overdo the panel lines, sure. That's because you're supposed to hand paint them. That's what they're designed for. Let's see what they've done now. Look at the box. It'll tell me that this is Hornby, which of course, you know, owns Airfix at the moment. Model design and tooling 2024. So you know it was actually designed now. It's not a rebox. Um, decal scheme and pack design 2024. That's always good to know, right? Da, 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 da. Doesn't tell me where the plastic was made because I wonder if we're still getting plastic out of India or if this plastic was done in Blighty. There have been rumours that Airfix is going to do its own injection moulding back in the UK. I don't know if that is true. If you know, let me know. All right, box is open and that's as far as I've gone. I cut the little, little tabs there so I could open the box. And yes, everything is in one bag, but at least these days with Airfix, the sprues have frame edges around them and they fit the bag. So there's less chance of parts suiciding and destroying themselves. So that is all good. So look, it's looking actually pretty good through there. We're going to get these out in a sec. Typical Airfix instructions. And we get quite a few colour schemes. Right? I'll be going with the Australian one, which of course is upside down because I'm in Australia. Of course. Yeah, we'll go we'll have a look at that in a sec. And there is a big sheet of decals, decals, uh, <coughs> water slide transfers. That's right. 
So the whole lot of those, usually they're cartograph. I can't see cartograph near anywhere, but usually all the new stuff from FX has been cartograph. They certainly look good. All right, let's get into this. Now with that exciting moment, yes, I haven't done this for a while, where I actually open up the plastic. I mean, the kits are reviewed have either been open because they're old kits and, you know, I've done them before, or um, the kits I'm working on now. So it has been a while since I've actually done this. <gasps> oh, 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 oh. oh, I've got a new cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> Don't smoke kitties. No, it's bad for you. Right. Now, we have little sprues like that. We'll just have a quick look through this with the instructions. The detail is quite fine. I've heard this reported. The panel lines are subtle. They're sublime. Is this airfix? Or has somebody gone and shoved a Tamiya kit in here? What's going on? Look at that. Same again. That's an incredible amount of subtleness. Well, that's good. And I mean, you'd really want to airbrush this because it is very subtle. There's no excessive you know, over scalloping on the wings. They're fine. And all the little details look fairly tight. I believe the... Um, the wheels are quite nice. They've got very subtle little... Can you see on them? They've got very subtle little lines there. Because remember, these would have been spoked and they're covered in fabric to make them aerodynamic. So that's how they were. And Airfix has pulled that one off. They've taken the subject firmly in hand, applied a liberal amount of lube, and look what the hell has come out. Yes, well done. Oh, and I'm liking this. See through, find them in the dark, sprue numbers. Hmm. which is handy if you've got part numbers that um, can be found. Or a sprue map. Well, we don't get sprue maps. This is Airfix, you don't get sprue maps. Now look at this. The interior has detail. Oh, not much. But there's some. It's crisp and clean. Tail plane. It's looking quite good. The interior is put together with a cradle. I've never seen this done Airfix ever. Uh, maybe some of the later kits have that I've missed. But there's actually a cradle. It's sort of like a wingnut wings kit where you build your whole interior up in a cradle, just like the real aircraft. This is obviously bits of the motor. Engine, whatever you want to call it. It's looking very nice. Now, notice the colour of the plastic. This is not that horrible, light-coloured, sort of insipid plastic we've had for years. And hang on. <laughs> I didn't get that curry smell when I opened up the box. Now, not being bigoted here, it's just that for many years now, since the kids have come from India, and that was no bad thing because that really got FX back on the map, so I'm not being, you know, not complaining about that, but there has been a sort of a smell. And I've jokingly said a number of times it was a curry smell. This doesn't. This doesn't smell like that at all. This is just, I don't know, if it's my snuffed up nose because of the cold, but again, look how finely detailed. This is. I mean, Airfix used to do finely detailed kits back in the 70s, right? I've reviewed a number of those. I've pulled them out of my Finding Airfix React kit series and just to show you what was possible and what I grew up with. That's why I have such fond memories of Airfix. So again, here we cut out. See? That's terrific. Struts. Funny how they've got them all on. Why have they got them up like that? It's interesting. Who knows? There must be a real good reason for that. Pretty strange. So sort of be, maybe it was better to injection mould them that way, so that they'd actually fit better. Who knows? Well, they have. This is clever. They've joined the little knobby bit that's going to go into the wing exactly at right angles, right? So exactly across two with a tiny little join. So these aren't the great big thick airfix sort of sprue joins that everyone whinges and complains about. This one's well thought out. It's there on the edge. That's going to cut off nice and neatly without you having to need to sort of go through and, you know, clean up all the in-between part of the um, of the, the struts. And then maybe that's why they've done this, so that this somehow works better with the injection moulding. Who knows? Because my bane is struts and rods and things that have got a sprue point there. And then you've got to clean it all up and, you know, invariably break the bloody part. It's hopeless. Now, this is all looking quite amazing. And um, here is our rudder. And again, subtleties, subtleties, all nicely done. Nothing's over-exaggerated. It's spot on. 
airbrush that, it's going to look fantastic. Tiny little details like the navigation light. This is all looking very, very good. Very, very good. And we have some clear parts, which I'll leave in there for the time being. Well, they're clear. That's all I can say. They're, well, they're not as thick as they've been in the past. Yeah, that's a lot thinner than uh, some of the old Airfix bits and pieces I've seen. This is all looking pretty darn nice. Let's get the instructions out and do a bit of a dry fit, see how this goes together. Typical modern Airfix instructions. They're rather nice and they're in booklet form that's been stapled together. So you get all that. We've got uh, a little bit of history here in Anglais, right? And then a few little sort of facts here of, you know, she could do 178 mile an hour. <laughs> Good. 350 miles range, wingspan, length. Oh, it's all there. Buy your own bloody kit. You can read all that. French. <laughs> and it's German. <laughs> so there you go. That's apparently all you're going to get. That might be just my release. Who knows? I know Airfix is very international now, so there's probably different uh, language versions in your part of the world. So there we go. There seems to be a big thank you down at the bottom here. I think this is because they actually go into the museum, they kind of measure up, or even, I believe, you know, 3D scan some of the actual aircraft so that they can get a true, exact representation when they do the model. Of course, it's all going to CAD. No one's actually doing clay models any of that anymore. No, it's all artificial intelligence and everything. Well, I hope not. Um, usual assembly instructions. Don't glue your moustache to the kit, you know. Don't start World War Three. all that sort of things. And, um, you know, and we've got a lot of um, diversity here in triangles and circles and question marks. It's very diverse. Very diverse. Yes. This yeah. is just the first page. And we have a mountain of stuff to get through here. So um, we've got seats that go together in various parts. Oh, look at all this. And then, as I said, the cradles, there's quite a lot of painting involved there. I'd like to do a dry fit and see how this whole cradle goes together. Let's do that. One was a bit fiddly, but I sort of got there. Two was very fiddly because it's vagueness of locating points. Three wasn't bad, but then you had to find that basically everything needed to be lined up. Yep. Four, I'm not even attempting yet. I've got the piece here, but um, I'll, I'll sort of put that on as we get closer to the cradle because I've noticed some problems. Now, you get to five, and that seems like it makes sense, you know. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's pretty obvious to figure out which way the little sort of feet go on there and everything like that. The only trouble is, it's like a big chunk of plastic at the end here, which looks like nubs to cut off. And you look at your diagram, and that looks perfectly clean. So an old school bugger like me would go, well, that's all supposed to be perfectly clean. I will cut everything off. But if you look right down here in the fine print, that little nub that you cut off, if you don't keep that, you got nothing to put in the holes for here. So my little part doesn't actually made up correctly because I've had to butt join it here and as you can see it's as wobbly as all buggery because I've been trial fitting it in the cradle. So watch out for that. There are some little um, little knobs there and you've got to actually leave them on which is completely alien to me.
So, sit rep. Uh, that got done. Pain the ass to do. Really vague butt joints. And then when you try to actually put it together, because there's actual fixed joints that need to get together, you find your vague butt joint has caused the whole thing to be out of alignment. I don't care at this point. That's done. thing I want to know is, does that fit inside the fuselage without there being any problems from the cradle? And how much of the bloody thing you actually see anyway? So is it worth doing any of that? All right, here's the same instance that I had before. I've cut off some little nubs here that we don't need. This one here I was just about to cut off, but I'm now so shit scared I'm looking forward. And that's actually designed to help you align and connect parts together. And similarly, you've got to really check because that there looks like something that you should cut off. But that's actually a part that needs to be kept there, that little bump. And you'd cut that off. I mean, with all the parts they made for this kit, you'd be better off with a hole there and you pop that little thing in. It makes sense because it is getting really hard for me to understand what do I cut and throw away and what do I keep in this kit. Very confusing airfix. So with the cradle now created, I'm going to skip all these little pieces here because there's lots more to add. There's the guns to add and all the rest of it. But there's no need for a dry fit. And also, what I really want to know is how much of this thing is actually going to be seen inside the fuselage. Well, let's have a look. Now, as per the instructions, that way up, seat goes up. That goes in as far as it can go there. It has to bang against that. So that's obviously where it's got to sit. Finally got all this together. I said I'm paranoid against what was nubs and what wasn't. Well, the little clicky system is good. And it does sort of fit. So we've got that. You've got to hope that there's not going to be that much cleanup. But here's the problem. All you see is a bulkhead, a seat, a yoke, and you know, you might sort of see some pedals. That's it, FX. I would rather you didn't have all that shit, and instead you gave us a pilot. That would be a hell of a lot more bloody useful. Cutting out the lower wings here, and um, not too bad. I mean, you know, they're all nice and thin. But again, here's this annoying little overlap thing here. And I have to second guess all the time. Is is that a part? Is that going to click into something else? This is really annoying. For I can tell, that is not needed. It's just obviously part of their new moulding process, which is all very well. And if you knew consistently they were just parts to cut off, that would be fine. So the thing is, FX, if this makes the moulding better, great. Do not make parts that have joining pieces that look exactly like that. That is stupidity. All right, finally, some success and some enjoyment, because quite frankly, the build has not been enjoyable up to this point. The whole interior thing, waste of time, too fiddly, vague instructions, not the best. But once we get past all that bullshit and actually just get into building the model, you know, instead of trying to pander to the market by providing an interior nobody wants, uh, it's good. The wings fit together fairly well. I haven't glued anything there because there are some holes here to drill on something. I don't know, I've, I've got the patience or the, the, the inclination moment to read that, find out what it's all about. The fit here is quite good. So I've only got rubber bands in there. And in fact, it may even, I oh, might do it this time. Now, when I first did it, it actually friction fit in there and I could um, take my fingers away and didn't fall. The tail plane fits in beautifully, it's one piece. And there's just this little piece here that you put together and that um, locks it all into place. So that just clicks in there. So that is all very nice. Very, that is nicely engineered. And that's good. In fact, part of holding the, uh, the rudder in place, right, is going to be that part. So you've got to make sure you get it around right away because, yeah, the, uh, the base of the rudder is part of that. So that goes in there. I don't know if that means that you're supposed to be able to tilt it or whatever's going on there. I don't think so. I don't think it's doing any tilting. Uh, but that piece there, I only glued that together because it's a bit wobbly, if not. But the friction is quite good. Positive fit, they say. Positive fit, that's what Beck would say. Positive fit. And, um, yeah, the um, once you get to this part, okay, the CAD's taking over and everything is clicking together very nicely. 
but I think we wasted a whole lot of CAD on producing an interior that most people are not going to care about. All right, we'd rather have a pilot airfix. We'd rather have a pilot in there and we can position this thing and make sure it looks like. A So here's the motor, and as you can see, there's a lot going on. You build up quite a lot. That looks fun. That's worth spending the engineering on for all the fiddly little pieces. Because guess what, FX? They will be seen. And you've got a nice prop and everything there. You've got bombs there to go on there. Oh, there's, there's so many things. Back here, what you missed is the struts. They look clever, and they look like they'll fit in well. Um, you've got posable airlines right that's very good nice positive fitting struts for looks of things the undercarriage looks fairly smart it's made up of three pieces should click in well the wheels i've already shown you they um they should look really nice when they're positioned so there's a lot of good things about this kit but you have to wade through a lot of shit before you actually get to what is nice all right and look at this that is a rigging guide that looks like it's straight out of a wingnut wings kit it's exactly how they do this so there you go and I'm sure the wingnut wings kits all have the cradles inside and everything. And yeah, you know, you make them up because that's the thing. It's a World War I aircraft. But the trouble is they're 130 second scale, not 148 airfix. No. So, you know, there's all kinds of stuff here. They go on and on and on and on and on about all this rigging. Um, the, about the only rigging that I'd probably be really interested in is the uh, X here and the um, doing the aerial there. All that other stuff, there's double bracing and everything. I think my 3D printer might solve that problem. So it's too bloody fiddly. And then, of course, we get into the various paint schemes. And you've got, as I say, you've got some here from Blighty. All right. And they're pretty. They're quite good. And then we've got this one up the right way this time, which is the Australian one. RAAF, right? Yeah. Royal Australian Air Force. Point Cook. Victoria, Australia. So that's nice. So, look. Is it a good kit? Well, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. But the trouble is, it's almost like Airfix has fallen into the trap of having to, you know, provide bells and whistles to, I don't know, get the millennials in. I mean, who's the market who has to build an entire interior that's never going to be seen every time? I mean, I did it once on the Sunderland as an aftermarket thing. Never do it again. Honestly, the Sunderland at least came with all the pilots, right? I would rather have a pilot any day than all that cradle crap. You could have moulded the cradle on the inside of the fuselage halves in there and just given us the bulkheads and the pedals and the joystick and the ring. We would be happy. We would be deliriously happy. You have wasted three hours of my time building a cradle, which isn't even finished, mind you. I still probably got another hour's worth of work. Plus, I'd have to paint it, you know, and all the rest of it. And what for, FX? What for? I don't see any reason for that that makes it a useful thing other than just a bit of marketing bullshit going comes with full interior wank 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 and that's about all that is it is a wank okay don't do it stop it all right well um uh buttons 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 yeah look um yeah i know i've whinged on and complained i mean i love airfix i've loved airfix for 60 years there's been a few airfix kits that have tested me and they've been a bit tricky, but usually it's I'd have to faddle them, mess around with them, and I didn't mind that. This has been an annoying build to this point. From now on, it might be interesting. It might be fun. I mean, it's back to just the usual sort of stuff, you know, putting on wings and things like that, making motors. That all looks like fun. That looks good. Would you like to see me finish this kit and do all those bits? You would? All right then, well, I need 10,000 views on this minimum, and then I will do two things. I'll finish Hercules, because that's just about done. I said I'd finish that last time. I will finish it, and I will finish the build on this. So there you go. It's all up to you. 10,000 views, that's all I want. <laughs> and you can buy me a curry while you're at it. Yes, I need one now. I can't believe I'm so annoyed. I love Airfix, and this kit has annoyed the poop out of me. So I'll leave it there. All right, it's goodbye from Australia. And it's Huru from Harry Hidini. Yes, yes, please. I know there were some words said that. I know, I know, they were very rude words. I'm sorry about that. But yet, I will get you some more fish. <sighs>